Hi, my name is Beth Gripping. I'm an acupuncturist here um, with Catalyst Acupuncture in Portland, Oregon. I operate with Bamboo Clinic in the office of Dr. Rebecca Asmar. And uh, I love educating patients about what I do. Um, so if you're interested in learning about some of the tools that I will be using during an acupuncture and Chinese medicine treatment, I'd just like to do a really brief overview um, and just show you what some of them look like. So, uh, and uh, also demonstrate really quickly. So first up is the acupuncture needle itself. Um, here's a tiny stainless steel, uh, single use, sterilized, uh, very small and flexible needle. Uh, this is a sarin needle manufactured in Japan. Um, just in case you're completely new to acupuncture, it's used for all kinds of medical conditions from uh, mental, emotional disorders, uh, just anxiety, depression, stress, um, to chronic fatigue and illness, um, autoimmune disorders, cancer, gastrointestinal, neurological, endocrine conditions, fertility, all kinds of things are treated with acupuncture um, that a lot of people don't know about, even skin conditions. So um, if you're interested, you should really ask your acupuncturist um, and acupuncturist uh, if they can help you specifically. So uh, I'm going to demonstrate a point that's right between the eyes. Uh, it's called yin tang. And uh, I use it frequently for um, helping to relax uh, people during a treatment. Um, it is uh, a point that releases serotonin and uh, improves mood. It also is wonderful at uh, relieving sinus pressure when you have a cold. Um, so I'm going to show you how I do it really quickly. So there you go. I had a misfire. Uh, that was a small blooper, so uh, you can add that to your best clips. But this is the uh, unicorn point, I like to call it. Um, I'm sure other acupuncturists have their own way that they think about it, but um, acupuncture is really painless. Uh, you don't have to um, even think about it when they're going in usually. Um, and uh, once the needle is actually in, uh, you hardly even know that it's there. It has a very gentle, slowly acting effect to relax your body and mind. Uh, and oftentimes people will just fall asleep during an acupuncture treatment. Um, so that is the treatment uh, for acupuncture. Uh, we can use anywhere between two to 30 needles during a treatment. This depends on your own constitution and the condition that we're trying to treat actually are treating. So um, as you can see, it's very simple. Uh, next up is a little bit more exciting of a therapy. Uh, this is called cupping. Some mas massage therapists use this as well, um, and it's popular in many different countries of the world because I, um, it's basically like a uh, the converse of a massage. Instead of pressing on the muscles themselves, it's actually lifting up the um, skin uh, very gently away from the muscle tissue to increase circulation between um, the skin and muscle and within the muscle itself. So um, here is a cup. Uh, this is a glass cup. Others are plastic or stone or bamboo. Um, and what we do is create a small vacuum in here using fire. Sometimes people use a pump. And uh, if you can pretend that um, this thing right here is your uh, large muscle on your back or shoulder, um, I'll show you exactly what it does to create um, suction. So there's the fire. And this is a pretty light amount of suction here. But it's enough suction to actually lift it. And you can see that it just brings the um, tissue uh, just slightly. Um, it, it just brings it up into the cup very gently. 
and it feels almost like a massage when you're having the cup on your skin. Um, I will also do moving cupping, which um, I'll apply a liniment and uh, something like a Burt's Bees hand salve uh, to the muscle area. I'll put the cup on and I'll move it um, around the muscle so it really feels like you're getting a massage and it's releasing some of the muscle adhesions and relaxing the muscle itself. Um, another wonderful therapy is moxibustion, which is uh, using a plant matter that is ignited in some way um, in order to warm and tonify uh, different parts of the body. And it can be used on individual acupuncture points, on meridians, or on entire regions of the body, such as the abdomen or the back. So um, usually we'll uh, have some kind of fire to light, uh, something like this, which is a moxa um, cigar. Oftentimes we call it or a stick because it's a compressed charcoal of uh, several different plants that are Chinese herbs. One of them is um, commonly known as mugwort in the West, and that's an artemisia relative of chrysanthemum and uh, sage indirectly. Um, this one is smokeless, uh, as smokeless as it can be. And uh, the way that it's utilized is basically just by holding the moxa stick an inch or half an inch away from the skin and uh, helping to activate the acupuncture point or helping to relax the muscle that it's used on. So that's what a uh, moxibustion stick is. There's also direct moxibustion, which is more complicated to use, and that would require a, um, a model to work on. So maybe that will be next. Um, and then finally, we have a gua sha, which is also called scraping therapy. This is a ceramic soup spoon, uh, very, very simple. And uh, again, I can use a Burt's Bees balm. And uh, what we do is simply scrape along a muscle to release muscle adhesions. And it also feels very relaxing. It's like a deep tissue massage, but it's a little bit, um, because there is an edge, a very rounded edge, um, it will really um, get into the muscle fibers and help to uh, reduce scar tissue and reduce muscle adhesions. Um, it can really, really open up uh, muscles as well as tendons and help them heal faster from injuries, from micro tears, from strains, and that kind of thing. I actually did gua sha on my neck earlier, and we have a bright red mark here, which would be the biggest hickey in the world. But um, this redness shows that uh, I have a lot of tension in this particular muscle, as you can really see. So I'm going to actually work on this over the next week to um, do a lot of gua sha in this area and, and relax the tendon. Um, because uh, the more you use it, the less redness shows up. So it's a really good way to measure progress. So, and it's really easy to do on yourself, too that kind of action. Um, it's wonderful for office workers, for people who work at computers, for people that are in one position all the time, and it's of course good for athletes and people that are straining their muscles constantly. Um, other types of li liniments that you might find acupuncturists using are something like a martial arts liniment. Uh, this is from Blue Poppy. It's a Shaolin Di Dat Zhao liniment. It has a lot of Chinese herbs in an alcohol base. Um, there's an Emily Skin Soother here, which is um, often used for skin conditions as well. It helps to relieve eczema and psoriasis um, and inflammation, so it's really good for tissue that has been inflamed and uh, helping to relax it. Um, and then finally, the lovely uh, Thai liniment, which is actually one of my favorites, and this one has turmeric in it, which is anti-inflammatory, and it smells lovely. It has um, a gentle mixture of menthol and camphor and other native Thai herbs. So those are some of the techniques that we use, some of the tools that we, you will see us use in clinic. And uh, if you have more questions, feel free to write me about them. And uh, I hope to explore other tools in the future um, because there are many other tools that we use in Chinese medicine. And we use all of them together to address 
musculoskeletal, physical, internal, medical, and mental emotional um, imbalances that uh, all work together to create a holistic method of increasing your vibrant health um, in a really gentle and supportive way. So um, thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you again soon.